Today we're diving deep into the world of CO2 injection for your planted aquarium. This is your complete guide to understanding, setting up, and maintaining a CO2 system. So let's crack on. Let's start by understanding the basics of CO2 injection in planted tanks. The process of CO2 injection involves introducing carbon dioxide into your aquarium water. This provides aquatic plants with the carbon they need to undergo photosynthesis. In turn, the plants produce oxygen and grow more robustly. In a natural environment, CO2 is absorbed from the atmosphere, but in an enclosed aquarium system, the CO2 levels are often limited. This can lead to slower plant growth or even deterioration of plant health. By adding CO2 to your aquarium, you're supplying your plants with an essential building block for growth. A well-maintained balance of CO2, lighting and nutrients is critical for a healthy planted aquarium. When you have an appropriate CO2 concentration, your plants will grow more rapidly and efficiently, which can help prevent algae growth as the plants outcompete algae for nutrients. It's important to monitor and adjust CO2 levels as excessive CO2 can be harmful to fish and other aquarium inhabitants. The ideal CO2 concentration for most planted tanks is around 20 to 30 parts per million. There are different methods of adding CO2 to your planted aquarium, such as DIY yeast-based systems, liquid carbon supplements, and pressurized CO2 cylinders. There are certainly plenty of options out there, and I have a great buyer's guide video should you want to explore all the alternatives. However, today we'll be focusing on a professional pressurized CO2 cylinder and regulator, since this is the most reliable and efficient method for providing consistent CO2 levels in your aquarium. A comprehensive system like I'll be showing you today consists of a CO2 cylinder, a regulator, a bubble counter, a diffuser, a solenoid, and a timer. Let's go through each component and how they work together. The CO2 cylinder is the heart of the system. It's filled with pressurized CO2 and releases the gas when opened. Cylinders come in various sizes and the choice depends on your tank size and space availability. Personally, I dose all of my tanks off of one six kilogram cylinder, which I get refilled at my local gas supplier for around 25 pounds. Next, we have the regulator. The regulator connects the CO2 cylinder and allows you to control the pressure and flow of CO2 to your aquarium. It usually has two gauges, one showing the cylinder pressure and the other showing the working pressure. A dual stage regulator is desirable if you can afford it, since this regulates the gas much more consistently and avoids the potential for CO2 dumping when you get towards the end of your supply. The bubble counter is a small chamber filled with water or oil that allows you to visually monitor the CO2 flow rate. Each bubble represents a certain amount of CO2 being released into your aquarium. Diffusers come in many shapes and sizes, but their main purpose is to break down the CO2 into tiny bubbles that can easily dissolve into the water. Inline diffusers are popular because they keep equipment out of the tank and can be more efficient in distributing CO2. Or there are the more traditional diffusers that you place within the tank itself, making sure to place it opposite to the filter outlet so that the water flow aids in CO2 distribution. Finally, a solenoid and timer is used to automate the CO2 injection. The solenoid is an electronic valve that opens and closes according to the timer. This allows you to synchronize a CO2 injection with your aquarium lighting, ensuring plants get the CO2 they need during their photosynthesis period. Any electrical timer will suffice, and I like to use smart plugs since you can easily control the schedule from your phone. Now that we know the components of a pressurized CO2 system, let's discuss how to set up and maintain it. To set up your CO2 system, follow these steps. Attach the regulator to the CO2 cylinder using an adjustable spanner, ensuring the seal is in place and the connection is secure. Don't over tighten the screws, you want it to be nice and secure, but also want to avoid over threading. At this point, it's also advisable to double check that your rubber seals are in place and in good condition. Then connect the bubble counter to the regulator and fill it with water or oil. Connect the tubing from the bubble counter to the diffuser. If you're using an inline diffuser, connect it to the aquarium filter's output hose. Secure the diffuser in your aquarium or in line with your filter, ensuring it is submerged underwater. Attach a solenoid to the regulator and connect it to a timer. These days, solenoids tend to be built into the regulator, but on older systems, you may need to install the solenoid valve into the outflow. Open the CO2 cylinder slowly and adjust the regulator's working pressure according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Adjust the CO2 flow rate by observing the bubbles in the bubble counter. Aim for one to three bubbles per second to start with, but you may need to adjust this depending on your tank size and plant density. 
set the time to turn on the CO2 injection an hour before your aquarium lights come on and turn off an hour before the lights go off. Now that your CO2 system is set up, let's talk about maintenance. Maintaining your CO2 system is relatively simple. Monitor the CO2 cylinder pressure gauge regularly. When the pressure starts dropping rapidly, it's time to refill or replace the cylinder. Clean the diffuser periodically to ensure efficient CO2 diffusion. Soak it in a 50-50 mixture of water and bleach to remove any built-up algae or debris and then soak in water and dechlorinate it before placing back in the tank. Check the tubing and connections for any sign of wear or leakage and replace if necessary. And keep an eye on your aquarium's pH level as CO2 injection can lower the pH. You may need to adjust your CO2 flow rate or add a buffering agent to maintain a stable pH. To fine tune your CO2 levels, observe your plants and fish for any signs of stress. If plants are growing well and showing vibrant colors, your CO2 levels are likely adequate. But if they appear pale or stunted, consider increasing the CO2 flow rate. Conversely, if you notice your fish gasping at the water surface or acting lethargic, you may be injecting too much CO2. So reduce the flow rate to avoid stressing your fish. But to avoid all of this trial and error, I would highly recommend that you use a CO2 drop checker with a pH reagent to monitor CO2 levels. Aim for a green color, indicating optimal CO2 concentration. Before we wrap up, let's discuss a fascinating phenomenon that you might observe after implementing CO2 injection, plant purling. Purling occurs when aquatic plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis at a rate faster than it can dissolve into the water. This results in tiny oxygen bubbles forming on the edges of the leaves and other surfaces. These bubbles, or pearls, then detach and rise to the surface of the water. Seeing your plants purl can be a delightful experience as it's a visual indication that they're thriving in their environment, efficiently photosynthesizing and producing oxygen. While purling is not a definitive measure of plant health, it does suggest that your CO2 injection is benefiting your plants and that they're getting the nutrients they need to grow. Keep in mind that purling might not occur consistently or in all aquarium setups. Factors such as water circulation, lighting and nutrient availability can all affect the rate of purling. So even if you don't observe purling, it doesn't necessarily mean your plants are unhealthy. So remember, adding CO2 can greatly enhance the health and appearance of your aquatic plants, creating a lush underwater environment for your fish and other aquatic life to enjoy. As always, monitor your tank closely and adjust your CO2 system as needed to maintain a healthy balance. To find out more about CO2 systems, check out my buyer's guide by clicking on the left card. Or to find out all about estimative index fertilizer dosing and how it can enhance your plant growth even more, click on the right card. Take care and I'll see you soon. Cheers.